Hi everyone! One of my favorite things about this time of year is that you can go fossil hunting on pretty much any road. All winter long when they spread sand and uh, all spring long while the rain works away at gravel roads and on that sand, it exposes these little fossils called crinoids. And they kind of look like tiny fairy coins. They're perfect circles. They're very, very tiny and they have kind of a little hole in the very middle. I don't know if you can see that very well. And they're basically the stalk of an animal that's kind of like a starfish. So here's an example of a bigger version of it. Uh, so it's almost like a perfect cylinder. You can see it's a perfect circle with a kind of a hole in the middle. And then a, like a stack of coins. Uh, now this is a relative, like I said, of starfish. Uh, starfish and sea urchins and um, sea biscuits and sand dollars and sea cucumbers are all animals that are cousins. They're in a group called the echinoderms. Uh, derm means skin and echino means spiny. And that's because a lot of the time these animals kind of have a spiny um, skin, I guess. Uh, so that's their fancy scientific name. But the echinoderms are really cool animals. They have a really interesting way that they live. Um, you've probably seen starfish have these little feet underneath. All along in this groove there's all these little hairs. Each one of those little hairs is a foot. It's called a tube foot. And it's kind of like a hydrostatic. It's filled with water and that's how it allows all those little feet to move and the starfish to move along the, the bottom or to, uh, to grab things. And starfish eat, uh, this is their mouth actually, right here. Uh, they convey stuff along the tube feet into the mouth or they, uh, they, put their, um, they put themselves right over what they want to eat. Uh, and actually this little white dot on the top is a starfish bum. <laughs> That's where the food comes out. Um, but sea lilies or crinoids are actually kind of like starfish that are upside down and then on a stick. So uh, they basically had a long stalk to keep them off the ground so that they could, uh, sea floor, so that they could compete with other things for food. And then they would sort of just wave in the currents and collect anything on their, um, anything they could on uh, their pinules. Uh, this is a model of a, like a cast, I guess, of a crinoid fossil. And you can see it's got a stalk, so the little coins. This bulbous part is called the calyx. And then this crown here has all the little pinules. And this is the part that the, that the sea lily would spread out and collect stuff it finds in the water. And then it would, it would convey it to its mouth and it would eat it. So it's basically like a starfish, but on a stick. So the thing that we find out on the roads are all of these little ossicles, which are basically plates. Um, that make up the stalk. So eventually when the animal dies, all those little ossicles, uh, they're made of hard calcium and so they persist in the ecosystem and they kind of become part of the rock. In fact, uh, all the rocks around me, like this uh, limestone rock and the rocks all around this forest, are made up of uh, calcium carbonate with a little bit of magnesium in it. And that calcium carbonate is from the exoskeletons of animals like crinoids. It also comes from animals like corals and um, gastropods like snails, bivalves like clams. So all of those different animals would have made up this um, limestone that's the base for the Saugeen Burst Peninsula. And I do have a diagram of one sort of in full life to show you. Uh, so here you can see she's got her long stalk a calyx and the crown and then she has these little sort of um, uh, root-like structures which are actually just more stalk that's kind of spreading out to help anchor her to the surface. This is the base of one that probably was in some kind of soft sediment and instead of having little kind of root-like graspers uh, it was just like an anchor. Uh, so those are some different kinds of crinoids. Um, the calyx, or the bulbous part, where kind of the bulk of the animal is, uh, is often not as commonly fossilized. Um, but in Ontario and in Canada, you can see these aren't very, these are kind of old photos, but you can see um, there's all these little triangular plates that make up that sphere of the calyx. And I do have a few pieces of those that I actually found uh, just a few hundred meters that way through the bush. Um, see how they're like little um, triangular plates and they've got the spines on them and they would all stick together. Starfishes have a symmetry of five parts. Uh, well they're bilaterally symmet symmetrical but they have five sort of um, parts to their base. You know one, two, three, four, five. 
uh, one, two, three, four, five. And so crinoids or crinoids uh, would have had um, all these little pinules would have either come off. Uh, they, sometimes they had five of them. Sometimes they had ten of them. So they were uh, each 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 of the one of the five would split off into two. Um, so sometimes you don't just find circular uh, crinoid discs. You'll actually find ones that are uh, pentagrams, which is really cool because they instead of having a circular base, they would have had a um, five-sided base. And here's a fossil of, um, I think it was found in Kirkfield, Ontario. And you can see there's all kinds of them with the tops preserved. Uh, and like I said, normally we just find the stalks. That's the most common part. And uh, it's probable that a huge part of the Soggy and Bruce Peninsula is made up of uh, crinoid stem parts. Uh, so in a way, we're, uh, we're made of stardust.